Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas Eve, depending on when you're watching this. And look, 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 Sal. Sal, 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 where is the Christmas spirit? Where is your Christmas sweater? I'm, I'm sorry, it's packed away. Where is your, your Santa hat? I'm sorry, I just got a new fade. What are we doing here? I just got a fade an hour ago. Why would I be putting a Santa hat? As much as I want to put the Santa hat on the fresh fade, you put something on that fade, you got to wash your hair, and then it's not as fresh as it will ever be until another two weeks. So we're here right now to break down a showdown slate on Christmas. Yes, a showdown slate on Christmas in the afternoon. It's going to be all around those NBA games, which I plan to have content as well for the Christmas NBA. I plan to release this maybe on Christmas Eve. So depending on when you're watching this, either way, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. I hope you all enjoy time with family. Hope you all enjoy time with friends. It's all about health, wealth, and love today, everybody. So I hope you all enjoy that. And I'm here to just break down the slate for you. Nothing else. That's it. You sit back, you relax, you take your shoes off, whether you're traveling right now, whether you're up before some other people are up, whether you're everybody's sleeping right now, or you're watching, about to watch the game 20 minutes before, and you're trying to get your lineups in right now. I'm here to help you relax. Take it easy. Let's break into it. Before we do, like button, big old subscribe button pops up. Give me that subscribe button, especially if you're brand new here. It really does help as we're trying to push towards 35,000 subscribers as a one man band here, putting together every single thing that you see on this YouTube channel, every single thing that you see over my podcast. Thank you so much in advance. And the video is sponsored by our proud partners over at Superdraft, the multiplier format. The multipliers, as I record this, are not yet out. But for example, what is Superdraft, you might say? And I know that hundreds of you, and maybe thousands of you at this point, already know based on their being a proud partner for a while now. There's a reason why they are still a partner. You guys go over there, you guys are enjoying it, you guys are winning the dollar rooski. We're bringing people over there. It has been a great relationship for all parties. The contests still do not fill. A multiplier format means, for example, if Alvin Kamara has a 1x multiplier on this slate and he scores 20 fantasy points, you multiply that by one, bam, he gets you 20 super draft points. If, though, for example, you're going to have, say, a 2x multiplier on somebody like Latavius Murray and he goes out there, scores a touchdown, has a couple of receptions, scores 12 fantasy points, you actually multiply that by his 2x multiplier. So he will end up with 24 super draft points and actually outscore his running mate, Alvin Kamara. It's all about projections. You can find it down below on my Patreon, patreon.com backslash. Sal underscore bet you underscore. You can track that, follow along all there, and get the plays in and smack around the competition and destroy them. Because that is what we are trying to do here. We're trying to destroy the competition, everybody. If you like the shirt that I'm wearing right now, go ahead, check out some of the other merch that is linked down below in the merch store as well. So check out Super Draft. My name's Sal. SAL will get you a free money bonus up to a thousand dollar rooskies. Go ahead and play. What are you waiting for? You're leaving money on the table. Let's start off up top with Mr. Dalvin Cook. $12,000. A couple guys above $10,000 on the slate, and a couple of them are running backs as they should be. The all star running backs are not on the main slate this week because a couple of them right here are on this slate. Dalvin Cook at $12,000 will have a negative, negative 7% run blocking advantage against the number one numero uno run defense of the New Orleans Saints. He has seen 22 or more opportunities in every single game since week two, and he has three straight games of 26 plus opportunities. He's the number one running back in evaded tackles, number two in yards created. Both him and Derrick Henry are up there in all those categories. Dalvin Cook for me. Sal, he's got to be a yes. Ah, not so fast. He's going to be a maybe for me. And the only reason why is because of the guy that's going to be below him, depending on some injury news, we will update all the injury news for the slate on the Patreon projection rankings, ownership, all that stuff. So you can enjoy your Christmas day while winning some dollar whiskeys, not just in the NBA, but also on this NFL slate. So why is he not a full on yes? Because if you're telling me to choose between one of them, and you might not have to choose if you could find some value and play both of them. But if you're telling me to choose, I'm going to be going with Alvin Kamara because I have an Alvin Kamara projected for 4.2. Yes, 4.4 actually more fantasy points than Dalvin Cook. So that kind of buries the lead, but Alvin Kamara is a yes for me. And here's why he has a positive, a positive 55% run blocking advantage this week. One of the highest in the entire season against Minnesota's number 26 run defense. He saw 16 opportunities last week, five targets. He's averaging 7.3 targets per game. Number one, 6.2 yards per touch in the NFL. Also number one and a 22 and a half percent target share that actually creeps up around 30% when Michael Thomas is out. That is both number one in the NFL. So if indeed when Michael Thomas is out, I'm going to have a yes by Alvin Kamara. And if he's not out, it's still going to be Alvin Kamara for a cheaper price point over Dalvin Cook for me. So that's how I kind of distinguish between the top two. They're both in play, prefer Kamara to Cook. Next up is Drew Brees, a positive 45% pass blocking advantage because Minnesota, Minnesota is so bad on defense. Dead last right now in pass rush. They actually took that crown ahead of the Cincinnati Bengals, who are now 31st, second worst in the league instead of being dead last, which is now the Minnesota Vikings. The top 10 overall protection rate this week for Drew Brees, 33 attempts per game, 243 yards per game. And here's the thing. He sucked last week because he definitely looked hurt and he still put up 20 fantasy points. So that is good to see, especially from playing from behind. Now he has a 29 and a half team total on this one. Going to look pretty good at seven point favorites. Drew Brees is a yes for me. I plan to get normally on these showdown slates. We get a lot of the quarterbacks in general. I don't like to put them in the captain spot as much unless they have some mobile upside. So Brees really doesn't fit that bill, but I plan to be getting probably 40 plus percent in my quarterback and just the flex exposures. The other quarterback, 
decent price point. He's been very good quietly this year in Kirk Cousins. A negative 29% pass blocking advantage versus a top 10 pass rush of the New Orleans Saints. And this is the thing. He has the 32nd ranked protection rate out of all quarterbacks who have taken a couple of snaps this year, but he's been good. Number seven in true completion percentage. Number four in yards per attempt at 8.2. He's attempting 31 attempts per game. Kirk Cousins is also going to be in play for me. Kirk Cousins receivers, the combination of his receivers, especially if Michael Thomas and or Traquan Smith, both are going to be questionable. Traquan Smith for the Saints left that last game early. It led to guys like Jawan Johnson, a former Penn Stater back in the day. It led to guys like, who was also a rookie. It led to guys like little Jordan Humphreys, a second year player, led to these guys seeing a lot more usage and actually finding the end zone in Jordan Humphreys case. If those guys are out, yeah, the receiving core and the overall stack ability and correlation of the Minnesota side looks a lot better. So that just helps Kirk Cousins at a cheaper price point a little bit more. I have interest in him as well. Now we get to those Minnesota receivers and oh boy, oh boy, Justin Jefferson at low ownership yet again at a $7,300 price tag last week in the main slate. We liked him at low ownership. He goes for over a hundred yards. He goes for another eight catches on double digit targets. He'll get Lattimore in this one. I'm fine with that. Like Justin Jefferson has been proven at this point to not really be concerned with his matchups, a positive 35% matchup advantage. 1.37 yards per cover is what Lattimore is giving up so far this season. He's now seen eight or more targets in four straight, and in three of those, it was 10 or more. So Justin Jefferson is a yes for me. His price point is $9,200 for what we know of showdowns. Wide receivers have some of the highest variance on the slate. Justin Jefferson at this price point can smash the slate in any format captain or flex. Next up is Emmanuel Sanders, a little bit overpriced here. He'll have a positive advantage, a massive one, positive 41% against Jones, who does give up an 85% catch rate in a smaller sample. Last week, Sanders had the big 51 yard catch, but not much really in the game at all. He did run a team high 28 routes, but it was a slower paced game. They ran the ball a lot and there was not that many possessions for either team. That's why you saw just 28 routes run leading the team, even though they were trailing for the far majority of the game. So four catches on five targets for 76 yards. He's averaged five targets per game and he plays about 28% of his snaps out of the slot. He's very close to a no for me to be completely honest with you. But if Michael Thomas is out and Traquan Smith, he's going to operate as the clear cut number one wide receiver. So he's not out of play at this price tag, but it is definitely a little bit overpriced. You can see a big performance here if both of those guys are out though. Like a 10 plus target game against this really bad secondary. I currently have Emmanuel Sanders actually projected out decent at 14 and a half fantasy points. But since there's so many good plays on this slate, like 14 and a half fantasy points would have been the second highest projected guy or third highest on that Pittsburgh Cincinnati game. Now you actually have some nice offenses, a bad defense in Minnesota and 14 and a half fantasy points is currently sitting. If I look at it quickly as like the seventh highest projected the player. Still good, but the guys above him all project out for better. And so does this one guy below him and Adam Thielen, a positive 22% matchup on the outside versus some Jones versus some Jenkins, who he's going to have on Jenkins specifically a 10 pound advantage over in four inches. That's right, right? This channel here goes all the way into these bands current body weights to give you the advantage that they will have a 27% target share, seven and a half targets per game for Mr. Adam Thielen, who is number six in total air yard share and number five in red zone looks this year. Mr. Adam Thielen is way too cheap, especially given his red zone role. You try and look for those guys who can have the huge hundred plus yard bonus on the showdown slates or the two touchdown upside. Adam Thielen has both of those. Michael Thomas at 7,800, kind of just a shrug emoji on what's going on with Michael Thomas just injured, getting in fights, obviously having the early injury to start the season, not great. And now it's just been hampered by a bunch of other stuff. If he plays, he'll see some Dantzler, he'll see some other guys as well. It'll be a really good matchup for him. He's seen six or more targets in all of his healthy games, and he's only gone under seven targets one time in all of his healthy games. And he leads the NFL with a 42.5% air yard market share right now, meaning that he's getting over 40% of his team's air yards when he actually plays. At $7,800, if you come in here and say Michael Thomas is going to be healthy, if you get me him practicing a couple of days and Thursday, they're saying he's in, he feels hundred percent fine. He's good. $7,800 is one of the most mispriced for anybody on a slate. $7,800 in this matchup for healthy Michael Thomas, he should probably be closer to $9,800. So right now, Michael Thomas is going to be a maybe only because we have to see if he's in and we have to see what the reports are. But I'm telling you, if he's going to be in there for a full role, he's going to be a yes. $7,800 is dirt cheap for a guy who's going to project out pretty similar to Justin Jefferson, who right now is in the 9k range. So a yes for Michael Thomas, if the news looks positive on him, obviously don't play him if he's out, give bumps to guys like Emmanuel Sanders and some of these other cheaper receivers that we're about to talk about. Raekwon Smith is not one of those though. He might not play himself either, but he's $6,400. And this is kind of an expensive price tag for even a guy who, okay, he's had one good game in basically two years now when he's been the number one or number two option on a team, whether Michael Thomas is in or out, which has been a lot of the time this year when Michael Thomas has missed. And there's been like one good game that pays off this price tag. A couple that are, you're kind of like, ah, right, he got me 12 points. But for the most point, it's 6,400. This is a good matchup for him, but he only ran 16 routes last week before injuring his ankle. That's when rookie Jerome Johnson took over and 27 routes. Humphrey took over and 19 to 20 routes. And on the season, you're getting Traquan Smith. Most of these games, the far majority without Michael Thomas, he's been seeing just four targets per game, 50% slot usage and a 12% share. It's a good matchup for him. But early on right now, I'm trying to cater this towards if you're playing one to 10 lineups, if you're playing 150, leave him in there. Maybe you get 7% of him, right? If you're playing one to 10 lineups, he would be a no for me right now. Traquan Smith does not grade out all that well at his current price point of just nine fantasy points in my projections. Link down below. Again, you can follow him on Patreon, patreon.com backslash Sal. 
underscore Vetri underscore. Jerry Cook, I do like because he's actually involved. Ran 25 routes last week, had a couple of receptions, seeing four targets per game, and over 20% slot usage is good for a tight end. He'll have a strong matchup against Davis, who allows a 78% catch rate. Not much there for him. $5,600 is just a fair price point for a tight end. That's basically like a little bit more expensive than he is on a normal slate, but it's a showdown slate, so less options. Makes sense, especially with some red zone usage for him that he will be in play for me. On the opposite side, Kyle Rudolph has missed two games now. Tyler Conklin and Irv Smith have actually been picking up some of that slack. Irv Smith played a ton last week. He ran a season high and career high 35 routes in week 15, caught three or four targets for 37 yards. That was very good to see the third most routes on the team, only behind Justin Jefferson and Thielen last week. On the season, just a 10% share and two and a half targets per game. If Kyle Rudolph is out, $5,200 Irv Smith is too cheap if he's going to run around 30 plus routes, like we have now seen for three out of like the last five games in a career high in this past week. So he'll be in play if Kyle Rudolph is out. If not, I won't have interest in Irv Smith. He'll be a little bit too overpriced for me. Latavius Murray, only seven opportunities in week 15, but they were trailing by 10 plus points most of the game. He usually gets opportunities if they're in a neutral to positive game script. Before last week, he saw 10 or more opportunities in three straight games, and he's averaging 11 and a half opportunities per game this year. Now he hasn't been great, right? 27 red zone touches is just kind of meh, two per game, decent, but I mean, you're going touches at the 17. It's not that great. He's only had three goal line touches, 4.8 yards per attempt right now. Also not that great at $4,800 in this matchup though, as favorites, I do think the game script will be in the case where he sees 12 to 15 touches very much. So in the cards, I've been projecting around that right now. And I have him in my player pool. And as we get now to the 4k and below range or close to that, finishing up the 4k range, you're getting to $4,200 saints defense. They're top five overall. They're okay. It's not something that I'm really trying to prioritize. I think there's enough values down below here that we don't have to get to defenses on this slate, to be honest with you, but their touchdown favorite favorite. They are number one in run defense. They are top 10 in pressure. They can cause some havoc on Kirk Cousins, who has been pretty safe with the ball this year and efficient. So Saints defense at $4,200, I guess it's eh, like fine. If you get like 10 or 12%, if you're playing one to 10 lineups, I would get like maybe one or two lineups with them at most. I think it's decent. Kickers will remain in play for me. You're looking at pretty much like a safe seven to eight points more times than not here. You don't have any upside though. So keep that in mind. I will play at most one kicker in my lineups per usual. Now we're pretty quickly as I scroll down to the screen. And as I scroll down, we finish up the three K and below range. A couple guys left here. Please do like button. Big ol' subscribe button pops up. Check out all the other content that's been put out this week for the main slate for some of the NBA content. You can check out even more tools and analysis on my Patreon down below for projections, rankings, ownership, and a whole bunch more coming. Check it out. Patreon.com backslash Sal underscore Betri underscore. And also get an extra drink for yourself. And if you are right now a sober person or you don't drink alcohol, get yourself an extra cup of water and an extra cup of Christmas cookies because it's motherfucking Christmas Eve or Christmas. If you're celebrating, motherfucking celebrate. That advertisement was just brought to you by Bad Santa. Get the motherfucking cookies. All right, Tyler Conklin, he's been good. Last two games of no Rudolph. Eight catches, 97 yards and a tutty on nine targets. He's ran 52 routes over the last two weeks. That is the third most on the team over the last two weeks. He's a former fifth rounder out of Central Michigan. He's decent. He'll be in play for me. Nothing crazy. If indeed, again, Kyle Rudolph is out. If Kyle Rudolph is out, and I like Irv Smith. I like Tyler Conklin. I'll actually go to Irv Smith a little bit more though. I think there's some more upside, especially in the red zone there. No interest in the Vikings defense for me, a defense that's averaging 4.2 DraftKings points per game. They're terrible in everything. They are outside basically the top 24 in every category. They're getting better in coverage, but that's just because teams are running all over them at this point. No interest. Lil Jordan and Humphrey, these guys are just going to kind of be if then statements, right? If Traquan Smith and Michael Thomas are in, no interest in little Jordan Humphrey or Jawan Johnson, right? If Michael Thomas is out, Jawan Johnson has played 80% of the snaps in other weeks and similar to his time at college when he was at Penn State before he transferred, right? He has not really been much. He's a rookie out of Oregon, but he transferred from Penn State. He's just been a guy who runs wind sprints on the outside, had a lot of drops in college, was kind of his concern. I'm surprised he's in the NFL. In week 15, he saw three targets, no catches on 39 air yards. So at that price point, he's kind of expensive. There's not that many cheap options on this slate because the Vikings really only use one running back. They only use three wide receivers, all their tight ends we've already discussed. And all the Saints cheap end options, right? They use Latavius Murray, no other running backs. All their cheap end options are priced up. All their cheap wide receivers are priced up in case these guys miss. So we don't have any guys below $1,000. Chad Beebe at $1,800, who hasn't topped four and a half fantasy points other than one game this year and has only had four total receptions in the last three weeks. He's $1,800 this week, right? But the problem is like, here's the thing. If you're looking below $2,000, Chad Beebe would be the guy that I have the most interest in. And I don't even like the guy. I haven't projected right now for like three fantasy points. That's not going to win you anything. But let's talk through the rest of these guys because we had Alexander Madison returned in week 15, only saw one carry in four routes, caught a pass for a target, but expect 15% of the snaps and no more than two to four touches because it is just Dalvin Cook season. So I don't want any of that. Kyle Rudolph will see if he's healthy. If Kyle Rudolph is healthy and playing, I guess you can get the sum at 2,400, but it's definitely now Irv Smith ahead of him in the pecking order. And now Tyler Conklin might run a couple routes. So 2,400, yeah, Kyle Rudolph, if he has two catches for 20 yards, maybe pays off for you. There's some touchdown upside there. He's averaging three targets per game, only playing 4% out of the slot, but he has the number seven in yards per target amongst tight ends. Keep a close eye on that. So I guess Kyle Rudolph will be slightly in play. These other guys are overpriced. Unless both Michael Thomas and Traquan Smith miss, 
I don't have interest in these other guys, right? Jawan Johnson, I think just stinks. I don't think he gets separation. I don't even know if he'll catch the ball if it comes his way. We've already seen him have a drop this year. And now he's $2,200. So two catches for 18 yards at 3.8 fantasy points. It's not like he's 200. He's all the way up here. So I'm not going to be getting to him at $2,200 because we're probably going to need to see like a three for 35, three for 40 performance for it to pay off at this price tag. I can get to little Jordan Humphrey because he proved it. He proved separation last week. He got the touchdown on a nice catch on 19 routes run. You're probably going to have to see Traquan Smith out to see little Jordan Humphrey move into the slot. If Michael Thomas is active, temporary expectations on all these guys. You need both Traquan Smith and Michael Thomas out to have an elevated confidence at these price points for little Jordan Humphrey. So little Jordan Humphrey right now will be in play for me if both of those guys miss. Michael Thomas is in. Don't want any of them. I think the target share condenses too much. So as of right now, we'll put him as a no, but if both of those guys miss, I don't expect them both to miss, but if they do, little Jordan Humphrey, I prefer over Joan Johnson for these uh, tertiary options in the Saints passing game. So literally a Christmas slate that has no gifts of value for you. It's all coal, all that other shit. If you give your kids coal, oh my God, I never heard of somebody who's done that. That's just terrible. You do it as a joke with the little chocolates. That's funny. You do it for real. Oh my God. You kids must be something bad. Y'all teach them a lesson. Get those kids taught a lesson. I guess that's a lesson giving them coal. But anyways, thank you for tuning in right now. No value on the slate, none to be found. So kickers and defenses are more so viable than ever before because it is top heavy with a bunch of really good options at $7,800 and above a decent mid range, honestly, a bad mid range, to be honest with you, like backup tight ends and backup running backs. And then your value is like kickers right now. Maybe some of those wide receivers at the bottom can pop off if the injuries come through for us. So thank you for tuning in. Like, and subscribe before you go. Enjoy the rest of your holidays. And I'm going to go enjoy now a plane trip home so I could celebrate the holidays on myself. So from past Sal, talking to you future people out there, enjoy the holiday. Best of luck on the slate. Best of luck on the NBA slates as well. And I'll see you all in the next one.